Dixon here. As most of you know, I use this Z-Pax Duplex during my through hike on the PCT. So since I've used it for like 2,000 plus miles now, I wanted to go ahead and cover it and let you know what I think. After I get done reviewing the Z-Pax Duplex, I'm going to go over quickly two other tents that I think make great backpacking tents if you happen to be on a tighter budget. So let's go ahead and cover the features of the Z-Pax Duplex. First of all, it's made out of Dyneema, which was previously known as Cuban fiber. Uh, it comes in four different colors, so this blue, olive, camo, and spruce green. So the camo tint is one ounce heavier because it has a thicker laminate on it. The spruce green tint uh, is actually a higher count of Dyneema, so it is two ounces heavier. The spruce green is also darker than the blue or the olive, um, but it's not as dark as the camo. Through this blue tint, if it's, you know, sunny, uh, you can see a silhouette, but you can't see like somebody naked, you know, so you're not gonna be shining everything to everybody. So this tent weighs 21 ounces, and if you're surprised at how light it is, I was too especially for being a two-person backpacking tent. One of the reasons it is so light is because it doesn't come with tent poles. You end up using trekking poles. Now, if you're a person who doesn't use trekking poles or you would prefer to have your own designated tent poles, you can order them for this tent. Z-Pax makes several different sizes of tent, uh, but as a solo hiker, the Soloplex or the Duplex seem to be the best fit for me. So why did I go with the Duplex? Well, for one, I like to buy a backpacking tent knowing, you know, that I'm going to have it for a while. So if you're a solo hiker, what if you decide to take a friend with you, you know, and you end up wanting to share a tent? Or what if you, you know, have the tent for a while and then you get married or get in a relationship and you want to take your partner hiking with you or a friend or whatever? You know, it just, it's nice to have the versatility of being able to fit another person in and two people will fit comfortably in this tent you can even still bring gear in and you know put your pack under your feet or whatever um, which is how I sleep anyway it is very spacious for a two-person tent so it's seven and a half feet long and 45 inches wide the height up to the top is 48 inches and the entry height under the zipper here is 36 inches so going with the duplex instead of the soloplex got me 9.4 extra square feet for only like five and a half more ounces. One of my favorite features of this tent is that it has two different vestibules and four doors. So you got a door here, you got a door here that I've got rolled up, and then the same thing on the other side. So if you are hiking with a partner and y'all are using the duplex, you know, you don't have to climb over your hiking partner in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. And uh, if you're a solo hiker like me, and it's cold and desperate times call for desperate measures, uh, you can use one side as your kitchen and the other side as your pee pee room. Not saying that that's the best practice, uh, especially for deterring animals around your camp, but I'm just saying that things like that happen when you're in the woods for six months. Another wonderful thing about having two openings on the tent is that if you set it up strategically, a lot of times you can catch a nice sunset and sunrise from the comfort of your tent. So it takes eight stakes to set up this tent completely. Um, I tended to only use six because I didn't set up the guy lines on each end of the tent. Um, I just didn't feel like it was necessary, but when it's raining or to have extra headroom or for, you know, windy nights, it is nice to have that extra stability. A lot of folks told me, you know, that they thought it was a bad idea to take a non-freestanding tent out on the PCT. Well, my tent for the AT, which you'll see later, also was not completely freestanding. But sure, you know, this one is less freestanding, I guess you could say, because it's set up with trekking poles. Uh, but it's very versatile, you know, the, the adjusters everywhere um, make it easy to control the amount of space that you're taking up, to adjust the height of your bathtub. Um, and your wall, you know, in comparison to the bathtub. I set up in sandy soils, I set up on rock slabs, and at no point was I not able to set up my tent when I wanted to. If I couldn't pound the stake into a rock slab, then I just laid the stake down and stacked rocks on top of it. In windy conditions and, and sandy soils, I was also able to secure the tent by stacking rocks on the stakes. Because it is made out of Dyneema, which is a waterproof material, this is a single wall tent. Now I know that gives a lot of people concerns about condensation, uh, but the way that it's set up with the eight inch bathtub, you've actually got a piece of bug netting that connects all of the walls of the tent uh, to the bathtub. Condensation can roll down the tent wall and through the mesh and not come into the bathtub where you're sleeping. And there are a little elastic bands on the inside that connect to the wall to help keep the bathtub positioned 
where the condensation can run down that wall. The bathtub floor is made out of a higher thread count Dyneema, so it's not required that you have an extra ground sheet uh, to protect the bottom of the tent, which also helps in keeping your whole shelter set up lightweight. Another thing that I found helped with condensation was to sleep with one of the tent doors open. Uh, also, it was nice when it was a windy night, if you could position, you know, and figure out which way the wind was going, you could sleep with one of your doors open, uh, have the closed doors, you know, pointing into the wind. So the wind just basically whipped around the door like this and still allowed you some ventilation on the inside. I can't say that there was definitely, you know, increased amount of condensation because this is a single wall tent. Uh, like I said, I tried to take precautions to help with ventilation. But for me, I noticed if I sleep near water or if it's raining, I'm gonna have condensation in any tent regardless. And what was nice about the duplex was the room inside so I could try to make sure that my sleeping bag, you know, wasn't up against the wall. Because this tent is made of Dyneema or Cuban fiber, uh, it doesn't tend to hold water as much as other tent materials. So you have less water weight that you're toting with you if you do get rained on. I have had people ask, you know, isn't that Cuban fiber super noisy when it's windy? And I mean, honestly, when it's a really windy night, I don't sleep that well anyway, because just the noise of the wind wakes me up. Um, sure, it might be a little, you know, crunchier sounding. Duplex also has two mesh pockets on the inside to store all your little knickknacks, you know, sunglasses, cell phone, things like that. It was nice to help keep my belongings gathered on the inside of the tent because I do tend to just throw everything out. So in the world of backpacking gear, not every piece of equipment is perfect, right? So one of the things that I do miss about other tents that I've used is having a mesh pocket in the top of the tent um, because I tend to, when I'm cooking at night or when I'm writing in my journal at night, instead of wearing my headlamp, I like to be able to stash in a pocket overhead and let it, you know, shine down um, rather than actually wearing my headlamp. So with this tent, I wasn't able to do that, but you know, not a big deal. Because it's a single wall tent with bug netting, you can't sleep without your rain fly on, right? It was nice not having to attach a separate rain fly, especially when it was raining. But, you know, the trade-off with that is on a night that you really want to maybe not cowboy camp, but just stay in your bug netting and be able to enjoy the stars. With this, you know, you can't look at the stars straight ahead. You know, you might can see some out the, the door of your tent if you leave it open. Um, but that was another thing that I did kind of miss. All tents are kind of quirky in a way. Uh, and one thing that I would say when you're setting this tent up in the rain you want to be careful you know on the ends over there that basically your pack doesn't push up against the bathtub and outside of the wall to where the rain is just running off into the mesh and into the bathtub now a lot of you know that i ended up having a leak in my tent towards the end of my journey in washington i noticed some very tiny pinholes in the wall of the tent and I didn't have time to contact z packs or, you know, deal with any of that. So I just traded a section hiker for his Nemo tent because he was about to, you know, be done with his section hike. So he let me borrow his Nemo Hornet, which we will go over in just a minute. And um, he took my z packs duplex and then ended up mailing it to me after he got back home. But I did contact z packs and I talked with them and I don't know if the holes were caused from me cowboy camping on top of my tent, you know, instead of having a ground sheet, uh, I had the thick wall of this bathtub. So, you know, I would just lay out the tent and lay on top of it. And I don't know, you know, with all my gear laying on top and me tossing and turning, you know, on the thinner wall of the duplex, if that caused some, you know, abrasion and the holes to form, or if also me packing my tent directly into my pack instead of into the stuff sack, cause you know, I was saving the, minute ounces or ounce or less of uh, the stuff sack for the tent you know I, I kind of ditched that and just shoved my tent down into my pack um, so because it wasn't protected in the stuff sack and was rubbing you know on itself a lot more and on the other equipment in my pack that too could have caused some abrasion and caused the holes to form I don't know uh, but I talked to Z packs and they said that yes potentially those things could have caused an issue um, or it may have just been a bad batch of Dyneema. So they are going to replace this tent for me and I will likely use the Z-Pax duplex on the CDT and uh, you know, see if it happens again um, with me taking care of it and with it being a different batch of Dyneema. So I'll let y'all know. I will say that Z-Pax does have wonderful customer service. They are 
prompt to respond and to handle issues. The expected lifetime of one of these tents is 2,500 plus miles, so like one through hike at least, uh, or several years of use, you know, um, for section hikes, you know, with care. And ZPAX does have a one year warranty on manufacturing defects. Overall, I really loved the ZPAX duplex. It's lightweight, has a lot of room, very versatile, and packs down, you know, into a small space in your pack. All right, so this is the other tent, the Nemo Hornet one-person tent uh, that I used on the PCT um, once I found I had holes in my Z-Pax duplex. Now, the Nemo Hornet is made of nylon. Um, this is the one-person version, uh, and if I wasn't going to be able to use a Z-Pax duplex, but I had to use one of the backpacking tents that I have used before, it would probably be the Nemo. Um, and it would be the two-person. Now, the two-person Nemo actually also has two doors, a door on either side, um, so two vestibules. This tent is not going to have as much square footage in the one-person, obviously, or the two-person um, as the Z-Pax duplex, but it, it still is roomy. The one-person Nemo Hornet actually has 21 square feet of room inside the tent, and then the vestibule is eight square foot of area to work with. It does have a little pocket on the inside for your smaller belongings and has the little mesh pocket up ahead that I was talking about so you can shine your headlamp down on you instead of having to wear it while you're in your tent. One thing I noticed about this tent, I, I never really found a good way to uh, fix this door open, um, but I'm sure there's some way to tie it up. But So if y'all know, please comment that. Uh, in the comments below on how you roll this door up. Normally there's some little deal to like tie it up, but anyway, I never figured that out. But as you can see, I mean, the one person is pretty, uh, pretty small, but it was still enough room to put myself and my pack in here, my gear. I never left my pack out. Uh, but again, I sleep with my pack under my legs. It does have, you know, the mesh lining for the walls of the tent and then the separate rain fly. So again, it's going to take longer to get out of the rain because it's not something that, um, you know, you set up as one piece like the duplex. You're gonna have to put up the regular tent that it can rain through and then, you know, the tent wall. With this tent and most of these nylon tents like this that have the mesh um, and then the nylon rain fly, you're gonna wanna make sure that the mesh does not hit the rain fly. You know, the body of the tent stays separate um, and that you have your rain fly staked out pretty well away from the tent. Because for some reason, when the wall of the tent hint, hits that nylon, it tends to allow the water and the rain to come in. I don't know why that happens, but it just does. The section hiker that I borrowed this tent from said that he did not use a separate ground sheet, even in the rain and everything, and that it was fine. He said that he didn't have um, any issues with it tearing holes in the bottom, uh, but generally, I think with these nylon tents, it is recommended that you do carry some kind of ground sheet or buy the footprint that comes with the tent. I do like that with the Hornet, that the vestibule goes on the long side of the tent. It just feels like you have more room to work with. And I like that the door opens sideways because I'll show you um, with the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2 that I have, um, that it's more difficult to get in and out. So with this tent, um, I just feel like, you know, opening sideways it's just easier to climb out of um, and that like I said you have more room to work with in the vestibule. In comparison to the Big Agnes the Nemo has what seems to be like a higher bathtub which helps protect against rain splashing onto the ground and into the tent. So because these back corners have to actually be staked out for the tent to completely stand it is considered semi freestanding rather than completely freestanding because the tent pole here connects to the center in the back instead of tent poles connecting to all four corners. And while this tent is less packable than the Z-Pax Duplex and it has its own tent poles, uh, it really wasn't bad. I just attached it to the bottom of my pack so I really didn't have to worry about packing it inside my pack. So with the two-person tent, you're looking at two pounds, five ounces, and with the one person, which is what this is, you're looking at two pounds flat. The price of the one person tent is gonna run you around $330. I mean, I'm sure you can find it cheaper if you shop around. Um, and then for the two person, about $370. But again, you know, that's just kind of like, if you put it in Google, that's what it pops up as. But I'm sure you can shop around or potentially find a used one. So this is the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2. And what that means is it is a two person version of this tent. Um, they also have a one person tent. 
This is the tent that I used on the AT and Perk actually used the one person version on the AT and the PCT. Um, and towards, I think, the middle of the PCT, some of his zippers started going, but it did last him one and a half through hikes and he actually finished the PCT even with the zippers not functioning completely. It does have room, you know, um, for two people inside. Uh, not going to be as roomy as the duplex. This two person tent is actually 28 square feet of area in here with eight square feet in the vestibule. The one person tent has 20 square feet inside and five square feet in the vestibule. Now the main thing that I liked about the Nemo Hornet over this tent is uh, the Nemo Hornet opens up on this, the long side uh, where this one opens up on an end. So I always felt like I was doing like a little trick, you know, a like a dog climbing into a dog kennel or something. <laughs> so, um, while you might not disturb your partner if you have a partner in here, uh, you know, cause you don't have to climb over them to get out. I still just don't love climbing into the end and I just didn't feel like it was, it was as easily accessible. But in this tent, you do have your two stuff pockets and uh, the pocket above head again to where you can put a headlamp. And this is pretty much the same idea. You know, you've got your um, mesh on the inside that you can stargaze out of, you know, your bug netting, uh, and then your nylon rain fly. And again, when you set it up, you want to make sure that you're not pressing the side of your tent into the rain fly because it will cause the tent to not be so waterproof. The Fly Creek tent is also considered semi freestanding because, again, you have to stake out these back two corners because the tent pole connects to the center here. And again, this tent is not quite as packable as the duplex, but is not bulky by any means. I will say that it was difficult to get in touch with Big Agnes when um, I actually burned a hole in the body of my tent while on the trail and, and was looking to get it repaired and everything. You know, it took a while for them to respond and then it was almost like I was always talking to somebody different. Um, so, you know, customer service is something that I like to keep in mind when I deal with backpacking gear. This was a wonderful tent though for the AT. You know, I have nothing against it. I think it's a great tent. I kept it, so I'm willing to use it again, you know, on trips. So the Fly Creek UL2 ran me $350 when I bought it, and it is two pounds, five ounces. And the one person is two pounds, one ounce, and was running for $300 at the time. But again, if you look online, you can find you know, probably a cheaper deal. So the Z-Pax duplex runs for $5.99, and a lot of people ask me, you know, was it really worth that much money for the upgrade uh, to reduce the weight of your tent? And for me, I would say yes. Because I'm carrying, you know, extra camera equipment, extra phone to record with, tripod, and the drone, then, you know, for me, yes, it was worth it. And being in the desert with more water weight, on top of you know that extra equipment yes for me it was worth it to save the weight um but that's really you know an individual basis you know it's is it worth it to you to upgrade so that is an overview of the three tents that i have used during you know the at and pct i think that all three of these are wonderful tents but i will likely carry the z-pax duplex with me on the cdt because i do like how lightweight versatile roomy you know, and packable that it is. Uh, if you have any questions about them, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer those. And then also in the show more and the video details, I'll have links to all three of these tents and probably the one and two person uh, tents on the other one. But thank you for watching. And with that, we will see y'all next time.